यार आई वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रेस माई क्रश ऑन अ बर्थडे एनी आइडियाज गॉट यू चेक दिस वेबसाइट Hello curious student so let's just say you want to build a special surprise gift for that special someone in your life and you don't know how to then i am here to guide you all and today we are going to build a website for your special someone using google gemini and we are going to do this without writing a single line of code like we will avoid writing code as far as possible and we are going to use ai based tools like google gemini to build a complete website from start to end and i will show you the process just right now so let's start so this is the main preview of the website let me just hit refresh and show it to you so this is the loading indicator that you see here and now we have a timer with 10 seconds so we have a clock beside it a message at the top and then there are some floating icons in the background which i have added with the help of google gemini once the timer is finished we have a happy birthday message and we have a button and on click of that button we have a pop up with some messages for your special someone and some opening animation as well so this is the overall app now let me just show you the prompt so the prompt was like this we are like creating a first the loading screen and in that uh, we added some animations so this is the actual code that you see and let me just jump to the loading part now i'll be sharing these prompts in the description of the video so this is the is loading section where we have the balloons first which are shown at the top of the loading indicator then we have the message which is loading positivity for your special day then we have the uh, emojis which are shown at the bottom of the loading message and if i hit refresh here you will see the loading message the balloons at the top the message in the center and the emojis at the bottom so this is the actual loading part and this is the animation delay by which the balloons rise up and down with some delay and these are the actual balloons that you see so we have the text we have the animation delay by which the balloons move up and down with a different method so this was all about the loading indicator and now let's move to the second prompt so i created this app in stages in the second thing i created the that after the loading indicator is done we need to create a timer screen in which we will show the timer in 10 seconds we will add some stars and some gift emojis in the background which are floating animated and then the pop out animation effect should be there in the box as well so once the loading is done then we show the actual timer to the end user and this is the actual timer code so we have the loading your birthday surprise first then we have the time left variable which shows the message or the time in seconds then in the time left we have a set interval method basically using the set interval method we are like reducing the time from 10 to 1 and then there is the time left section by which we like switch from the interval to the next screen when the interval is finished this is the loading interval which is set to the initial 5 seconds and then we show the timer to the end user and these are the variables by which the transition between the loading and the timer happens so we have is loading we have show timer then we have the time left variable is initially set to 10 seconds and we can change it as well so once the timer reaches zero we show the main screen which is the text with happy birthday and we have the open your birthday greeting card button so for the code of that is at the bottom and as you can see we have the happy birthday then we have the cake emoji then we have the em open your birthday greeting card button that you see here and this is also generated using a prompt so we haven't written a single line of code for this entire app and once the button is clicked we show the pop to the end user so this is the pop up and we have some emojis popping up so again we like i added the prompt iteratively so we have the open your birthday greeting card is clicked then we show a pop up with some message and if you see that this message that you see on the left side it is the same as the one you see on the right side on the greeting card so just a little something for someone 
so right hand side of the data is day and the message at the bottom so this is added from the prompt and I to use chat GPT for generating the message as well and this is the close button then we have the emojis present then we have the message and the final message at the bottom so this was a simple short way in which the pop-up was built then I added a few more changes like in the initial loading screen and all the screens we will have the animated loading emojis that you see at the background so these are added in the next step so they were added using the animation keyframe so we use keyframe animations for animating emojis like this and this is where the pop-up emojis are and this is the background emojis part where the background emojis are present and it is then like looped through and based on the animation delay and the position the items are shown in the background and they are shown to the end user the last thing which i did was like i had to do some iterations over this and after the third try it got it right so i wanted the balloon and celebration emojis to pop up from the pop up when the button is clicked so it took some trial and errors and then finally the emojis went outside like from the pop up towards the top of the screen and then disappear so for this we have the keyframe animation kind of a thing so if you see here we have a class name which is animated flow up and the opacity is then going to zero and then the item dot delay is added so that the elements go one by one at the top then they start from top 40 percent by from which the pop-up is present and then they move up so let's just go to the keyframe animation and try to understand how this goes so in the keyframe we write the animation duration like what should happen at 0%, 10% and 100% of the interval of the animation. So here we are like translating it negatively and that gives it the like going to the top kind of a moment where initially the opacity is 0 then opacity is set to 1 then the translation happens to vertically then opacity is again set to 0 and they move to the top of the screen and the flow of animation works and it moves forwards. So this is the custom CSS which is generated by Gemini app and using this css animation we are like moving the emojis at the top and this is the final preview that you see with the pop-up now you can host this website into platforms like netlify so now the next step is to set up the app locally and install it so for this first go to the website called as tailwindcss.com and here go to get started section so the first step is to install node.js and run the first command which will set up a react app for you then cd into that react app now install tailwind css and the necessary node models there once the node models are installed you will see the react app set up with the node models next thing is to like take the text changes and paste them into white config.js so we need to import tailwind css and we need to add it into plugin section as well once that is done we need to import tailwind css because we are using it into our app so go to the index.css and clear right import tailwind css once that is done run the command npm run dev so this will like start the react app locally and you will be able to see the code so run it for a while and you will see the code so i basically copy pasted all the code from gemini app into our local app.js and in the app.js we added the code and this is the final code that you see and we have the we are changing the index title and that is how the title at the top changes so we basically copied an entire code from Gemini app and we pasted it into a local react app and the code you see here is present once that is done the next thing is to create the build so run npm run build command this will create the build for your project and this is the actual build that you will host on some online platforms like netlify so these are the build files that you see next thing is go to the package.json and here you will see the npm run preview command so this is useful to like check whether the final build is loading properly as you can see it is loading so the next thing that we do is we go to the website called as netlify and this is the hosted project that you see here so go to the project section in your Netlify account. So create one and go to the project section. Then click on add new project and select import from existing project. Then you can either host on GitHub or directly drop it into the 
app so i am using the drop command so simply drop the disk folder upload it to netlify like select the disk folder and click on upload once you upload you will be able to see the actual project into the app so this is the hosted app and i have just changed the domain to a proper name and now as you can see your project is hosted on the url now then you can send it to your special summer so this was a simple short tutorial on how you can create a birthday website for your special someone or your crush uh, let's just say your partner and it was just done in let's just say 10 20 minutes from my end from your end also i don't think it will take much time now i will be sharing all the prompts which i used in the gemini app then you can like customize them and build your own apps now instead of source code i think it, it is much more convenient to share a prompt nowadays because that way you have a creative control over how you want to build app and frontend development is slowly shifting towards ai based development where content developers are using ai generated workflows so this is my first tutorial where i want to like personally also transition from just coding to a prompt engineering based workflow where we are like learning how to create the right set of prompts to understand how to write them very well now a key takeaway from all this is if you observe i did not add the entire prompt in one go like there was no single prompt which i added into gemini app but i added the prompt step by step like first we created the loading screen then the timer screen then the main screen then the pop the reason for this is i tried with the prompt with the entire all screens together but it did not work well and i wasn't able to like customize it properly for every screen when i added the prompt for each individual screen properly then gemini understood okay for this screen i have to do this for this screen i have to do this and it is simply like how we used to like divide a complicated problem into smaller parts and then build each module individually when we were programming ourselves right so google gemini or any other ai tool is just like your pair programmer who needs to understand those modules one by one like in that way it is uh, had it has much better context of how to develop those little little modules and then create the app step by step so that's the prompt engineering tip from mind don't try to create the app in one go but like start with the smaller part first then the next part then the next part and so on and so forth that way your life will be easy the code generation part will be easy and life will be easy for the ai code generator too now a notable mention is if you try with platforms like lovable you will be able to create better apps so also try platforms like lovable as well if you can i wanted to try this out in gemini because i was doing this entire coding on my phone yes i built this entire website on my phone and not on my laptop so only the hosting the final build generation and uh, taking the code from uh, like the gemini to vs code that was done on my laptop the rest entire thing i did it right on my phone because sometimes i don't have access to laptop because i get uh, quite less time in between my other work so i just hop on my phone and i just open gemini app and i select the canvas feature on gemini and i simply add the prompts and generate apps like this once i'm done with the app and once i'm happy with the app i then take the code when i get time especially on the weekends and then i take the entire code and then i host it to platforms like netlify so if you are even on phone and you are just like feeling lazy to open your laptop just launch gemini app on your phone add this prompt add the canvas it will run wonderfully well the second advantage of this being when you are sharing this website with others nowadays you share it on social media right like instagram whatsapp facebook or i don't know if you are using facebook but let's just say you are using any kind of messaging handles you share those link on your status updates and people open these websites on your phone so if you are like coding on your laptop even on the responsive view you might not get the 100% native experience or feel or any issues that might happen on your phone but the advantage of using an approach of building the app entirely on mobile is that you know that how the website will look on the mobile itself and you are able to tweak it accordingly that was another reason why i generally like whenever i am building a website for mobile first platform i generally nowadays just use gemini and i do entire coding on gemini app on the not coding just prompting on the gemini app on my mobile phone and then i like switch it over to laptop just for the hosting purposes and it's pretty easy like gemini is able to run the code on phone quite well so that's the tip number 2 you can develop this app on your phone like once you watch this video just open to gemini app and paste the prompts which are shared in the youtube description third thing is customize like don't just blindly copy this app even i am not the original creator of this idea 
I got this idea from an Instagram reel. Like I think the the guy's name is Anuj, and he quoted this app first. So a notable mention to Anuj for creating this kind of an idea for developers where he created this website first. I took inspiration from it and I added the prompts in Gemini to create a similar flow like that in my own app. So a notable mention to him as well. So he was the first creator of this idea. I just gave it a funny kind of a fun spin and then showcase to you all. So take inspiration from other reels, but create your own spin and yeah, create them, share them with your special someone. And if your life changes by that, or if you are positively learning even from all these tutorials, then hit the subscribe button, like the video, and send me the feedback if you have any. If you face any issue, just like mention them in the comments of the video. I will be glad to help you out. And this is the only the first part in the series. I will be. like sharing more such videos on ai based workflows and how to use ai based tools to speed up your front end development and how to use them and another notable thing i want to mention is if you are looking out for a job nowadays the market for just developers is reducing because of ai and because in high influx of developers like the ratio of the vacancies to the number of developers is like quite skewed so there are quite less number of vacancies and the number of developers applying for a jobs is higher so companies are finding hard to find the right candidates but the thing is this is a transition field right like this is a transitional period where you are transitioning from a pure coding kind of a workflow to a ai based workflow even i am myself transitioning from this so there is a chance i am not saying i am 100% sure because i don't know the future but there is a chance that companies will Hire developers who know this AI-generated workflows well and who are able to use AI-based tools effectively. That's the core reason why I'm creating these tutorials because I want you all to switch from traditional coding background to wipe coding or AI-based background where you know how to use these tools effectively, not just to create projects but to create good projects and to even solve bugs. So I will be sharing another video in the next part which will be based on ChatGPT five. that i will show you how to create projects like basic projects but how to solve the bugs as well and we will try to understand how ai based workflows can be used to solve bugs faster how to speed up our development and be the engineer which the companies need today like the traditional methods of teaching that you find online they are all based on things which were before chat gpt era this is a post chat gpt era and there is a transition 10 years back when i was fresher in the industry the cloud computing era was booming then there was front end era where react boomed up front end development got its spike and everybody is transitioned into front end development and yeah everybody got salaries like crazy now this is a second transitional era in the next couple of years we all need to like transition from traditional coding to ai based coding we need to become a good prompt engineer first of all that's the one thing which i am pretty sure of like any field that you take from content creation to programming to your day to day job prompt engineering has become an essential skill and no matter how many courses you take on prompt engineering like you might see people on linkedin sharing like hey this is the course on prompt engineering which i took these are the effective chat gpt formulas i am going to tell you one thing it can only be improved by creating projects on your own and improving that skill by creation just like you can improve your coding only by creating projects and not by watching tutorials you cannot improve your prompt engineering skill unless and until you start coding using prompts yourself so that's the overall goal of this videos so if you found this goal video useful then come back to my next video and i will see you all in the next video as well. so yeah that's it from my end for today hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you all in the next video as well thank you have a nice day goodbye